Hi folks, Madman here, and we're going to talk about Corona and touch joints. And um, you can see here I've created a simple app which uh, utilizes a touch joint to allow me to drag this ball around on the screen. So I'm going to show you how we've accomplished this here uh, in just a minute. Now what a touch joint is, is it's a temporary joint um, that's created specifically to allow you to drag things around on the screen. Now let's go ahead and bring up a new project and we're going to start building this from scratch. The first thing we need to do is we need to require the physics library in order to be able to use any physics uh, library commands. So we're going to do that by doing this require physics command here. And then we need to start physics. Don't forget to do that because nothing will work if you don't start physics. Now we're going to create our ball. I'm going to center this thing on the screen. Uh, we're going to use the Corona vectors. Um, we're going to use a Corona circle vector. Display dot new circle. And we're going to put it in the middle of the screen. This is content center x. Display dot content center y. And we're going to give it a radius of 30. Let's see what happens. Good. I don't like white balls on black background, so we're going to set the fill color on that. I'm going to make it a red ball. Okay, good. Um, notice that it doesn't respond to gravity or anything yet. That's because we haven't added a physical body to the ball. Um, we're going to do that in a minute, but I want to go ahead and create the floor or ground. And we're going to do that using a new rect display that new rect command. We're going to create a rectangle. We're going to decenter it on the x-axis and we're going to drop it to the bottom of the screen. And it's going to be the width of the display. And it's going to be just a sliver. Um, so display.content height times 0.05 about 5% of the content height. We'll set the fill color to green. And save it. All right, there's our ground. So let's go ahead and add the physics bodies to these two objects. We're going to first add the physics body to the ground. Add body, physics.addBody. We're going to add it to ground, and we're going to make this a static object. Now, that's important because if you make that dynamic, it's going to... Whoops, let's go back in here. Oh, physics. If you, uh, if you make it a dynamic body, then that ground is going to drop off the screen, and that's not what you want. We're going to go ahead and add another body to the ball this time, and we're going to make that one dynamic. Now, I'm going to supply an optional parameter for radius because default shape of a physics body is a rectangular shape, which is not what you want around the ball because then it's going to roll strangely. So we're going to make the radius of this physics body to be the same as the ball's diameter. So we're going to make that 30. Let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, it drops and it, uh, it stops on the ground. That's great. So notice I can click on this and nothing happens. And that's because A, there's no function to make anything happen, and B, there's no event listener. So we're going to take care of that next. Let's turn our attention to the function that's going to allow us to drag that ball around on the screen. So we're going to create a function called drag ball. We're going to pass it an event parameter. And this is important uh, because we're going to be checking the different event phases um, in order to determine what should happen whenever um, the ball is touched, when it's drug around on the screen, and when it's released. We do that uh, using the phases of the event. Now I'm going to start off by setting up some convenience uh, variables here. We're going to assign the variable body to be uh, event.target. 
Now event.target is the object that's been touched. So that's just all, that's all you need to know. The object that this, that's been touched will now be accessible via this body variable. Um, the next one we're going to set up is phase. And that's going to be equated to event.phase. Now the phase, each event has a, a certain number of phases. Um, in our case here, with our touch listener, we have a phase of began, which is when the object was initially touched. There's the moved phase, which is when the object was uh, moved around on the screen. And then the ended phase, whenever the finger was lifted off the screen. So um, we're just setting up that uh, convenience variable there so it's easier to write the code later. Finally, we're going to set a variable for stage and we're going to use the display.getCurrentStage method. And what that does is that command is going to allow us to set the focus on the object that we touch. So now that we've set up our four, those variables, we're going to uh, check the phase. If phase is double equal to began, so we're checking to see if this is when the object was initially touched. Again, I could have used event.phase in place of this, but this makes it cleaner to read. We're then going to use the stage um, method to um, set the focus on the body we touched. So we're, the body is going to be what we set the focus on, which is also known as event.target, otherwise known as the object we've touched. And then we're going to also supply the parameter event ID. Now event ID, it's not um, used so much here um, because we don't have multi-touch enabled, but events all events have IDs that are uh, assigned, and if you have multi-touch enabled, you may have multiple event IDs whenever you tap more than one finger on the screen at the same time. Now we don't have multi-touch enabled, so um, it doesn't really matter so much, but you do need to supply the event ID parameter in here, otherwise this won't work. Body that is focus is equal to true. Now this set of commands actually sets focus on the object we are touching. Um, then finally, we're going to create a temporary joint. So body.tempJoint. Now, so we're just creating a property on our event.target, our body here. And um, we're going to um, assign it the physics.newJoint uh, method. And we're going to create a new joint called a touch joint. And the parameters we have to supply are the object to be touched. In this case, it's the body or event.target. And we're going to start off um, with the, well, the next two parameters are um, the location where the joint should be created. In this case, we're going to just make it the body X and the body Y location. Now I'm going to show you a different way of doing things just so you can see how it looks, but for now that's what we're going to do. All right, so next um, we've uh, checked the phase of began. Um, we're going to check the phase of moved. However, we're not going to do that unless the body or the object we're touching is the focus. So we're going to check to make sure it is. So else if body that is focus, then it's the same as saying body is focus is equal to true. Then and only then are we going to check for the next phase. If phase is equal to moved, then we are going to use a method called um, on the temp joint, temp joint called set target. And we're going to supply the set target method with two parameters, event.x and event event.y. And what that does is it updates the location of the touch joint to be where we are touching on the screen, the x and y locations of where we're touching on the screen. This in effect is doing the magic of making the ball track 
with the finger uh, on the screen. Else if phase is double equal to ended, then now we've, oops, else if, now what we're doing is we're checking to see if we've lifted the finger off the screen. And if we have, we're going to just start nilling out uh, the focus of the, uh, of the object. So we're going to use the stage method, stage focus, set focus, um, body. That's the object that the focus is set on, and we're going to set it to nil. That basically removes focus from the object we've touched. Then we set the property of is focus to false. These two commands work together to remove focus from the object we've touched. That will cause the ball to drop on the ground um, or whatever uh, once you've released the touch. And then finally, we want to remove that touch joint since it isn't needed anymore. So body.temp joint remove self. And that removes the touch joint. So now we'll go ahead and end that if then statement. And we'll end the, well, no, we're not going to end just yet. Well, yeah, we are. But we're going to add a return true next. OK, so we've got this ball here. We got this, um, this function built, but yet nothing happens when I drag on it. So we obviously need to add one more thing, and that's our event listener. So ball add event listener touch. Now remember, this is a touch listener, not a tap listener, because tap will not pass event to the function. So you want to use touch. And we're going to invoke the drag ball uh, function. So let's see what happens. Pick it up, and there it is. Now, what's happening though, notice when I click on the ball here, when I pull up on it, it centers the ball around my touch point. I, let's say I pick it up from the very edge. See how it just sort of snaps to the center of the ball? That's because I have set the temp joint to be the body.x and body.y, which is the default anchor point for that particular object. Now let's make it a little more interesting. We're going to change these to be event.x and event.y. And what that's going to do is it's going to put the joint at the point I've clicked. And that allows me to rotate the ball around an axis. And it just makes for a more interesting touch joint. So I prefer to use this kind of touch joint. Now, if you don't want your object to rotate at all, you're going to want to use body.x, body.y here in this, uh, in this new joint command. But otherwise, um, try using event.x, event.y. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. So um, that's how you create a touch joint in Corona SDK. I hope you found this useful. Please check out some of my other tutorials on Madman's mobile app dev channel. Um, thanks for watching.